Dobry Dean, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you very much. I am very, very happy to be here. I feel already very well in pressure since one month, over one month. So I would like to thank you all for the organization of this event. Um, I will try to speak slowly, um, but if I get excited and talk very quickly, you can show me some, give me a sign, and try to slow me down. Um, because my research project is a little bit complicated, I try to make it simple for today, and I will not tell you all about my project, but just for one part of my project. So, um, at the end of the presentation, I would be very, very happy if you can ask me a few questions concerning my project. So, um, I would like to introduce you my postdoctoral research project at the Free University of Berlin in Germany. So, give you an idea about how scientists are working in Germany, in which way we work in Germany, and what is a research project, how we deal with the project, and also I will go a little bit to the subject of my project. So, my project is called Media Transformations and Convergences. It's about the changing role, of media, changing role of media in contemporary aesthetic practice and scientific practice. So if I give you a short outline of my project, it has four parts. In the first part, I deal with the theories of media, mediality and intermediality. This is the first section. And today I will only talk about the first section of my whole project. I will not go to the other steps. But I'll, I would like to tell you just the names of the other parts of my research project. The second part is aesthetic use of media. I mean, how we use the media in contemporary art or artistic practice. Which role has the media in, in the way of um, artistic doing? In the third section, I deal with the scientific use or epistemic use of media. And deal with the connection between media and sciences. How the media affect scientific knowledge, how it helps to scientific knowledge, or how it manipulates the scientific knowledge. So media do not only have positive um, contribution to our practices, but they can also hide the facts and manipulate the facts and make the science or art in a terrible way. That's not the topic of my subject, the third one. Also the fourth one, I would like to introduce you briefly. Media transformations between arts and sciences. The most fascinating part of my project is actually this fourth part, because in this part I am searching is the science is, or scientific knowledge generally have some aesthetic dimensions. So I think this will be maybe interesting for our faculty here aesthetics and art culture, because my thesis is that even in the scientific practice itself, in the laboratory, during the scientists practice their um, knowledge or create knowledge, we use always some aesthetic elements. So science is not always devoid of art or aesthetics, but there are lots of aesthetic dimensions in nanotechnology, biotechnics, or in other fields of the science. Even in the humanities, when we produce a text, we always use some aesthetic um, sentences or verse. We try to make it aesthetically in a good way. So anyway, this is the whole project in just one page. I will not go in detail, but I will talk to you today is more um, a short overview of my project in the first step. In the second sp step, I will tell you about my research aim. What's the aim of my project? In the second and the third place, I will talk about the questions, specific questions of my whole project. Fourth, uh, fourth one concerns the methodology of the project. And the last one, I will um, introduce some contemporary theories of media, intermedia, or mediality. So, first of all, when we hear the word medium, it's the word that we hear actually every day, in everyday life, and in the last case, it becomes more and more. What do we understand from this word? Usually we use the medium 
for many, many things. We use it for televisions, for electronic devices, for materials, objects, air or money or photography. On the other side, media can be used as the perception or cognition, such as vision or hearing or the understanding of human capacity. So, but in my project, I am more using, I am more going into the detail and specifically dealing with the sound, image, and the word. Because these three words, these three media, sound, image, and word, are the most basic elements of human perception, understanding, and also creation in our aesthetics and scientific practices. So I will come to that, but in this, this part, I would like to tell you, medium or media is a very large concept. And usually we don't know what we, to what we refer when we use the word medium. So the aim of the project, to make it simple, to specify its meaning, what the media is. So I will try to make it specific in, in the way I use the sound, image and word, and in the video that I will show you around the end of my presentation, that will be more um, understandable how these three elements combine with each other and gives us all these different dimensions. My research project has three basic aims. The first one, I would like to develop an interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary concept of media. And in the second one, I want to be far away from one-sided understanding of media because usually we understand in the contemporary research that media is only a concept that can be used in the media studies or visual studies or um, film studies. But actually, today, now, in this moment, I am using also media. I am using language at the beginning, I am using these devices, I am using words, I am using images, I am using my eyes, and you are also using to understand me your eyes, your conception, your understanding. So we both interact with each other. Social communication itself is a kind of mediation. So media is not something that only um, that we think like television, computer and such devices, but media were always from the beginning of human history. So that's why um, the meaning of media becomes more and more confusing. The research aim is to make it specify and what is the media and how can we use it in the science or scientific knowledge at the same time in aesthetics in a productive way. So some of the research questions related to this are which role have the media for human practices, our self-understanding and our relation to the world? This is the most philosophical basic question that I am dealing with. Maybe for this department it is a little bit complicated, but I pass this. The most, more important um, question is what kind of functions do the media have during the production and reception processes of individual arts and science? Because media, as I will argue in this um, presentation, are not only instruments or devices that we put and take it them back, but media are substantial, sub substantial elements which change and modify our practices. So the third big question that I am dealing with in my research project is called how do media change and affect those practices and what change do they themselves undergo? So this, is, this will be the, another section of my project. So media do not only change our life, our way of understanding, or our way of talking, communicating, our way of, way of doing science or aesthetics. They themselves also change. Sound itself also changes. Image itself also changes. Our perception itself also changes during the history, during the, um, um, in the way of our practices. So media is not something, or medium is not something stable. It always changes. It makes the fact change, but at the same time, it gets changed. This is the double understanding that I am using in my um, project. So when I combine this to my methodology, 
as I already signalized, that I am using a non-instrumental way of understanding of the media. Media are not merely instruments beyond our practices, but they modify and recreate our practices effectively. This is the first methodological approach that I put in my um, project. The second one, I am uh, going beyond a material-oriented understanding of media. Of course, media have some material dimensions, but we cannot understand the media only from these perspectives. So I choose a more practice-based understanding of media, and that I will show you in the coming sections. So the theories with which I am dealing with shows more how to understand media in a non-material and non-instrumental way, and to use it more productively in our aesthetic understanding. So I chose five different approaches to understanding media. The first one, perceptual theory of perce um, um, first perceptual theory perspective. That means it concerns our perception, seeing, hearing, vision, visuality. This is the first um, approach. I will come to this point back. I just give the names first of all. The second one, phenomenological approach. In this approach, it's uh, more important how the media make the things visible, audible, or touchable. I will come to the, that point also. And third one, performative approach. Media is not only the um, electronic devices, but also human bodies themselves are media. That will be the, another perspective. Fourth one, perspectives from the technical philosophy. Media is of course, the technical side, so this side is also human creation that I will talk about. And fifth one, system theoretical approach. So I come to the theoreticians just to get to, to get a little bit familiar or to make you a little bit familiar with these um, philosophers from United States, Germany and France. In the first part, I just want to tell a few words about perceptual theory um, of media. This one was um, defended by the theoretician like Peter Mar, Harmut Böhme, Peter Matusek. They are um, all from Germany and very famous guys in the contemporary German discussions. So what they do is actually actualization of Aristotelian concept of media. So as I said at the beginning, media is not, as a, con is not a concept that we use only today but the philosophers used it even 3,000 years ago. Aristoteles chose the word metaxi to, to give an account of the media. For him, medium is not something here or there, but it is always in between. I mean, neither the microphone nor me is the media in the sense. It is the air, what is called the metaxi. In this way, he, gets, he goes really beyond the, beyond the understanding of material-oriented uh, meaning of media, but he gives Aristotle, Aristotle, Aristotle or Mar, Böhme, Matusek, they give an account of media in which there is no subject-object dichotomy. So media is something that connects the things, media is the things with each other, it is not only a material. So this is the first perspective, but there are many other perspectives for media. The second one, phenomenological approach. Most important names in contemporary research from this approach are Boris Groys, Dieter Mesh, Josef Gohl, and Lambert Wiesing. So the basic role of media for these theoreticians are to make the things visible. Only through the media, we can see, we can touch, we can um, perceive the things. And in this way, the media, um, the media can fulfill this function only if they hide themselves. Let's think about, we go to the cinema, we watch, we watch a movie. In this movie, we don't see any, anything on the wall. We just want to concentrate the content and everything on the frame is not important for us. If it becomes very important, if we hear the voices from the cinema or other things, 
then the media has not enough function to give, to make us something visible. So phenomenological approach says, if the media lose its uh, function, I mean, if the media become less visible, it makes more visible. Today we realize also the televisions and electronic devices become smaller and smaller, smaller. This is the same direction that this approach is always saying. If the, these devices become smaller, 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 we are less concentrated on, on the devices themselves, but more in the content itself. Sorry. Wow. It's a little bit chaotic. So I come to third point of my presentation. I think I am done with this. Okay. I don't know what it is. It's another medium I put there. So this is performative approach. It is more about the bodies and creation through the bodies. And this is the most important names um, from this approach can be Sibylle Kramer, Uwe Wirt, Dieter Mersch. And their biggest argument is mediation is creation. That means media do not only help us to understand something, but media perform and create something. Media do not only make perceptible, audible, or visible, but they generate the things as such. So I will not go so deep in these theories in each part, just give an overview. If you have questions at the end, we can talk about them more in detail. So perspective from technical philosophy is also similar. Media are, as techniques, not a mere invention of humans, but vice versa. The they create the relationship between people, between humans, and extra-human life. And um, their concept is that through the media, there are, we create new possible spaces which do not exist in the world as such. Media create new spaces, is a human creation at the end. So coming to the last point, system theoretical approach. Uh, it's the most, most, one of the most complicated theory in the humanities, in social sciences, also in media theories. Niklas Luhmann's approach and those others are his uh, scholars, um, Johan Pesch, Lawrence Engel, Engel and Jens, Jens Schröter. So they work with the concept of form in medium and they mean that form is something different than medium because even to understand what is media, we need another media. We need another medium. Medium cannot be understood as such. We try to understand with the language, with the word itself, or with images. So we are always in a circle that um, this approach tells us we cannot get rid of medium. We are, even when we try to understand medium itself, we use different media. So this is the one condition that we should take into account when we talk about media and media theories. So I will go shortly from mediality to intermediality, which is discussed in today's philosophy very, very much, because there is a problem in the intermediality theory. Um, I will make it simplify. When we talk about intermediality, we have to think that there are at least two elements which interact each other. But usually we don't know which are these elements. So the videos will be also about this. Jens Schröter explains this. The word intermedia always assumes that there are first certain monomedia, poor media, and then mix one each other. Question for, of, to the intermediary intermediality approach, are they really pure or monomedia? So is there really pure sound without image or word? Is there really pure image without sound? If it is possible to understand for the scientists or for humanities or for aestheticians. So about the relations and combinations of media or intermediality, I will introduce first two 
um, authors. The first one is the most famous media theoretician of the last century, Marshall McLuhan. And his concept of intermediality can be summarized as such. The crossings or hybridizations of the media release great new force and energy as by fusion or fusion. That means if two different media come to each other for him, they create new energy. But it's a very materialistic view of media. So um, the idea that they create something new is also very confusing. There was very long time no account of this. But in the last century, in the last decades, there are some um, research on this topic. For example, Mitchell, the famous art historian and theoretician, say that all media are, from the standpoint of sensory modality, mixed media. So for him, there is no pure media. There is no monomedia. Everything is intermedial. Sound has also some contents of image, or the words have some dimension of sound and image. So it is very difficult to separate them analytically, because the human perception itself already mixed of sounds, images, and words. This is his theory. So I will come to another theoretician, Michel Chion, and um, to an experiment, McCourt experiment is called, McCourt experiment, um, because in his account of intermediality, we can see something new. As I told you in um, Marshall McLuhan's theory, the crossings of the media release great new force or energy. I thought it's very materialistical, and um, we don't know what is this new in this intermediality. But for Michel Schoen and this experiment, his experiment, not his experiment, but an experiment that he is preferred, there is something new that we should take care of that we should consider. Uh, consider. Um, and I will show you this with a video, so then we can try to talk about this at the end of my presentation. Reels, this isn't always the case. Is it? So... Have a look at this. What do you hear? I will start the again. Sense of it all. Generally, everybody hears ba or something similar. Is it clear, I think? Yeah. Because um, in this experiment, now we see the video. That's why we can get affected from his mom. Now we continue to watch it, and because he will repeat the same. And in this moment, do we hear again ba or fa? Fa. So we are all false. It's not fa. It's only the image fa. Now I turn off. I, I was hearing also in the same way. But now I will do like this. This isn't always the case. So we don't see, the, we don't see anything. And we try to understand if the voice is changing. This bar is changing or becoming far. But look what happens when we change the picture. Can anybody hear at this moment far? I don't hear it anymore. Can we come back to me? <laughs> I have to. So, 
Uh, can we stop it? Thank you. So, um, you can watch this video again, um, but what I want to say, when we see the image that the guy is putting the lips down and doing like this, we are thinking he is saying fa. But in this video, he never says fa. He is always repeating the same sound till the end of the video. He is always saying ba, 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 from the beginning till the end. But since we see this image change, we think, human perception thinks, it must be fa. So sound and image is not something that you can separate and think separately. As a human perceptor, we always combine them unconsciously. So if it is really com uh, complicated, I don't want to make it longer, you can test it. It's called McCork experiment. I need to go to the slides now. Uh, yes, so to summarize, it's the McCork experiment using speech where a spoken word and a video of a person articulating an unmatched sound gives rise to a third imaginary sound. So usually if we mix sound and image, we get something new which doesn't exist actually. This, we call this actually audiovisual illusion, but this is our reality in this world. It's not an illusion. We are living with this. We are living with this audiovisual sense uh, perception. So coming to the end of my presentation, I would like to summarize just briefly what I am doing in this project, going back to the points. So I first deal with the mediality theories in the first part and point that they are creation of open spaces of experience and possibility in various practices of knowledge, art and social communication. That means I am dealing with the mediality because they are part of our social communication, artistic production and aesthetic per perception. In the second part, I am dealing with the term intermediality because there is no mediality without, without intermediality as we discussed, as, as we show in the last part. So thank you very much for your consideration. I don't know with the timing, but I am sure that we'll have some time to discuss and I will have some time to hear your questions. So you can also ask me questions in Slovak. Um, I think Adrian or Jana will help me to understand. Thanks a lot. Yeah.